Hi everybody, it's April. Hello, hello. So, there's a big to-do going on about this stamp set by Mama Elephant. They have done these uh, mini sets and started selling them at the box stores last year. Um, in fact, uh, I wanted to mention to you guys who are not able to find this at Michael's to check your Joanne stores. Maybe you have already. Um, I don't know, but um, I found this at Michael's, and I am going to insert some photos of what the end cap looks like. It's going to be a display in the center aisles that is similar to how they always do their holiday setups at Michael's, um, the way that they just still had the Halloween setup. So it's kind of an island by itself with just Halloween items, but these are going to be just Christmas items. So, <clears throat> again, hopefully those pictures are going across the screen now, and you can see what I'm talking about. So, I think I got a few different angles. There's wooden stamps on the very top of the display. You want to walk around, and actually when you're looking at the stamp display, the side, there will be four sides. Um, one side has all tags and different... Um, you know things to make tags and things like that for gift tags and then one side had stickers one side was all stamps on the very bottom row you're gonna see some art um, art impressions little pop-ups and um, I'll probably show a little uh, close-up of that section so right above those um, artistic inspired I think it's AI um, that company Right above those is this one little stamp set, and so it's kind of hard to find these amongst all the other ones that say uh, recollections and stuff like that. But I have seen in the past, let me show you, um, when Mama Elephant did these at Joann's. So she did all these sets, and I found these at Joann's last year. So, uh, you, you know, maybe... Um, something we'll look for. I haven't been to Joann's in a little while, so I apologize, but anyhow, hopefully that's helpful. You can screenshot maybe a picture of what I just showed you and take it into your store and ask when they will have their displays set up so you can come back in around the time that they'll be getting it out. So anyhow, I wanted to let you know that I apologize. Um, a friend on Instagram had posted that she had found this, so I immediately ran out and I was able to find it at my store. And then um, we we did a family road trip yesterday, and we wound up way over on the other side of the Pisgah National Forest in this small town, way out. I mean, literally, we drove through some scary stuff. <laughs> but when we got to the other side and found civilization, there was a Michaels. I was like, let me get in that store. And they had one. So I just wanted to let you know that currently right now on Instagram, I have reached 500 followers. So I'm doing a giveaway on Instagram. If you want to go over there and check that out, and you will be eligible to win this stamp set and I also picked up a set of these tags now I'm using this set I got one for myself as well and it is basically a clear uh, low tags it's basically just a uh, making gift tags but I'm gonna make a shaker out of it so it comes with some twine <clears throat> and this is on that same display so I wanted to show you maybe an idea of how to use it if you are the winner if not, if you just want and you're able to pick these up, you, maybe you would come back to this video and have some ideas of how to use it. So, okay, I'm going to just move on with these products here. Now, um, these are my sets, but I do have brand new unopened sets for the winter. And I wanted to share with you some of the projects that I started making. So, I used my MFT Scallop Circles die. And this one I just cut out of some MFT cardstock, the red and white, in smaller sizes, just so I could have a little bit of a matting. And the thing I, my husband just asked for some gift tags, and I didn't think about, um, you know, asked him, did he want it to hang? Did he want it, you know, how is he going to use it? And he said, oh, no, no, I don't need it to hang. So I stamped on the background to and from, and that is using 
one of these sets I found in my stash. I apologize, I don't know who made this set, but I believe it was Fiskars, and it's still available in the stores. So at the bottom here, you have the to and from, and I like that font, so that is what I use to stamp the back of all the gift tags. Now, now he tells me, though, is that he does want them to be hanging. So I had tried to go in, I do not have a very small hole punch, and I messed one of the tags up by trying to punch a hole there and um, slide some ribbon through. I had just bought some cheap ribbon at Michael's as well, and I was going to slide it through. I think the better option would have been to insert a ribbon in between the layers before you, you know, as you're matting it. So technically this ribbon would be behind the reindeer and that white scallop, if that makes sense. So I'm not sure how I'm going to fix these because I don't have a hole punch small enough. I might just um, use this really super thin twine that comes with, um, with the uh, tags and maybe use my little, um, you know, that little piercer tool here like I did with the brads and just see if I can get something through there. But we're not going to do that today. I just wanted to show you an idea of, you know, different things you could do uh, with, the, you know, making some gift tags very quickly. All I did was stamp out the images, color them up. They come with the coordinating dies, so that makes it super easy and fast to cut them out and then literally just stamp them on there, you know, just tape them on there, flip it over, hit to and from. I think um, another cute thing would be, which maybe I could do that, um, to salvage these. If you had a Tim Holtz tiny attacher, I've already stamped on the back of these, but if I wanted to, I could probably go in and just redo the back of it so I could get a tag, a hanging tag on it. So let's see, if that makes any sense. So, But if you had a Tim Holtz tiny attacher, you could probably do that. So almost like a little ribbon. And then I could hide and disguise it in the back. I might do that. <laughs> so okay, so I'm gonna put those out of the way. Um, another thing I wanted to mention was, even if, bear with me here, even if you couldn't find this stamp set, you know, I don't want you to be discouraged. Use any circle dies that you have. We just talked about shopping your stash and looking through your die cuts or your colored images that you've just done, you know, or have had in your stash from doing the daily marker challenges. So you could use any image. You could use any shapes to make your tags, you know. Um, so you could put that little guy on there. You could use these little guys. These are, I believe, from, um, oh my goodness, is it Lawn Fawn? I'm not sure. Maybe a Lawn Fawn set, but you, you get the idea. So you could use any shapes to, you know, cut out these two. Uh, inst if you don't have the scallop circles, you could use any shapes, you know, and use any uh, little critters that you have. And then you really, all you're doing is um, if you have those tiny uh, little punchers, you could punch a hole and string your twine through it. If you um, have the lawn fawn trimmings, that's probably a better quality of a hanging material. I don't have any of that, but, um, you know, you could do like I was just showing there with some ribbon and just, you know, disguise it and uh, maybe use a tiny attacher and then put another piece on the back to cover to disguise your ribbon or just take the ribbon and put it in between your layers before you tape them down. So something like that. So then, you know, again, I know it's going to look like a ribbon, but these are just something so you can hang on your t on your presents, okay? So I just wanted to remind you not to be discouraged that there's other things that you can make the same, you know, do the same thing with. Any of the images you have, any shapes you have, you know, please don't be discouraged and just use what you've got, okay? But, okay, so I wanted to share with some friends on... Facebook and Instagram 
Um, we were talking about doing shakers, and I know a lot of you get frustrated with shakers. It was the bane of my existence when I first tried starting to make shakers, and they still can be quite a problem. So don't ever get discouraged, you know. Um, it's just practice, to be honest with you. There's a few little tips and tricks. It's a little bit easier now for people because they make these thinner, um, you know, foam tapes that can fit along the sides of smaller frames like that. They make the circle ones. I mean, they make everything now, but, you know, um, it used to be you just had to cut everything down and, um, you know, just like maybe fold your tape in half, so stick it together, and then you can cut down, and it makes it more flexible if you remove the release paper on both sides. Um, so, anyhow, I just wanted to share making a quick shaker, um, and I'm going to just do that live. If you don't want to stick around for this, I understand um, it's just pretty much for the beginners or people who might want a little, um, you know, a visual guide to see how I'm going to make a shaker tag. Um, so, yeah, so if you are sticking around to watch, uh, thank you so much. I'm just going to color up one of these uh, little deer very quickly. I'm using the same uh, color palettes that I used in my dog cards. So I think I'm going to go with the... Um, the E33s. Let me zoom you down. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to go with the E33s. Right there, if it would focus. There we go. And I'm just going to color one of these up and we will get started on him. Um, actually, yeah. All right, sorry, had a little fuzzy brain there for a moment. So E33 and E34, and these are kind of dark. Um, I know if you're going to use Spectrum Noir, um, the TN5, and I'm not sure where my, I think one of mine, some of my browns are dry. Um, you could even go in with like warm grays, use your BG6 and BG8. Um, but I have like, I don't know where my TN3 went, but like this is TN2. You could use TN2, TN3, and TN5, but I'm going to use my Copic. So, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's see which one did I pick. I picked this one, so I'm going to go in with this little guy here. And really, I'm just going to start on the left side of his face. He has Christmas lights, draw, you know, hanging on his antlers. So, as far as a light source, <laughs> technically, it, if those are lit, it would probably be lighting the top of his head. But, as per usual, I am not going to color my images um, caring about the light source unless it's really something I want to be prevalent. So I'm just going to come in here and throw some color in. Nothing fancy. Um, I just don't really, you know, want to take the time to do that because it's on a, you know, it's on a gift tag and it'll more than likely get thrown away. So I'm going to go in with a little bit darker now, the E34. And you see how I've left some white on my um, deer. I've left some white over in that area. So the last time that I go over this image, that's going to leave a brighter area on, on the image. So, Okay, and I'm really not going to focus on too much shading on this small image. Um, oop, there's one of my sentiments. And so here we go. We're going to go back over the entire face of this deer now. And hopefully if we did it right, we'll have a little bit of a, a lighter area, yeah, on that side of his face. So, you know, we have a little bit of lightness over there. And then the same goes with this. There. And then we can come back in on the legs. If you really want to be, if you're practicing or you want to be a little bit more um, detailed, you could go back in with a darker shade. Where are we at? We're at E34. 
So let's go to E37, and I could just come in here and put a little bit of darkness in here just to show that this leg is in the back. And then also, if we want, we could do a little darkness on his belly and his chest. So that's going to bring this front leg forward on this outside of his body. And then I'm just going to go back to this lighter E34. And if it makes a difference or not, you know, that's, that's just strictly up to you. Um, okay, so I'm not going to do too much with that, but um, let me put my caps back on and I wanted to show you something here because I went off. Now my trick when I go out of the coloring line is to take a white gel pen. I just use a jelly roll and it's so much quicker for me to just come over here on the side. You guys probably can't even see this where I went out. But right there over by his hoof I had gone out of the um, coloring lines and also on the bottom of his hooves but I'm not worried about that because we are going to color over it. Again, this is for a gift tag so I'm really not too concerned. I use a very light hand and just very lightly dotting the hoof on this reindeer. I'm putting a dot on one side, a dot on the other, and I'm leaving a white open space in the center. I'll bring this up closer in just a moment. Little tiny dab there, and a little tiny dab there. So that's going to give the impression of a shiny hoof. Okay, and I'm going to go in and color his nose. Okay, and then what color do we want his antlers? We'll go back in with that darker shade, the E37. Now with these, I like to take the darkest shade on the inside of his antler as best I can around these, around those lights. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm also going to put a little bit of darkness on the inner part of the ear. I know this is a little tricky to figure out what I'm doing, but bear with me here. Okay, so I'm just trying to bring a little bit of uh, darkness <clears throat> on the inside of the ears that are facing, or the antlers that are facing the ground, and then that way a little bit of lightness will be um, on the top of the antlers. So almost gives the impression that the light is on the, you know, coming from above his head. So, no more than, you know, two markers. You could honestly just go through and color all of this with colored pencils. You could color these with um, any, you know, any coloring medium, medium that you wanted. I think colored pencils would probably be super fast. And I made a little error again there. So I'm just going to touch up those spots with my white gel pen. I missed a spot. Okay. And then his little tiny ears. Wrong side. I'm just using my lightest color on the top of his ears. Okay, so <clears throat> there's that. Super fast. Not going to care too much about shading. And let's see, we have reds, greens, and this teal color on this tag. So I think I'm going to go in with a green. <clears throat> and do the Christmas lights green. I'm going to go with a bright color, which is G07. It says Nile green. So my Christmas lights are going to be green. I 
I've ordered some of the Glow in the Dark Nouveau drops. And I am super excited wanting to use those on Christmas lights for the holidays to see how it'll work. Because they look like they're translucent, like the translucent drops. But it says they're glow in the dark. So I thought, oh my gosh, let me try those out on some Christmas lights. Okay, so that's really about it. And then we're just going to do his collar. And we will be done with this little guy. And we can cut him up and put him inside the tag. All right, let me see what I did with my gold. I want to do gold or silver. I think I will do, sorry. Okay, so I have these two little cheap pens that I got at Target. And it says Yubi. And they were just little gel pens, but I'm going to do his little, let's see, I think I'll do, you know what, let me do his collar green. And then we'll do silver bells. Okay. And then the only problem with this is I feel like it will cover up the black lines. You kind of got to be a little careful there, but, but, you know, again. Okay. So we will cut him out. And then we'll get making a shaker tag. I'll be right back. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, I'm back. I have learned from experience to wait until after you die cut these things to add your little details. So we're going to go in with the white gel pen and add a little shine on his nose. And I'm just going to do three little dots on his cheeks. And we already have a highlight on his hooves. But if we felt like we lost any of that, we could go back in and add it. And we could do little tiny dots on these Christmas lights. And if you wanted to, I mean, you could really be fancy. You could add little glossy accents to those. You could go in um, and, you know, really embellish it if you want. But I'm not going to. I'm going to move on to making the shaker. Set that over there. Get this out of the way. And so I'm just going to, I'll probably need a backer piece for him to go behind him in here. So I'm going to just take, let's see. I have some scrap of this MFT paper and I probably just cut down, let's see, come up to the bottom of the tag there and let's see, we can make a little marker, mark where we want to cut it at, let's see. Same thing on the bottom. Okay. I am going to cut inside of the line that I drew. I should be using my paper cutter for this or my paper scissors, but you get the idea. Okay, now see if that's going to fit so it's a little bit wide. And we've got to trim just a little edges off where they're rounded. Or you could go in and round it. Let's see. If that'll help, but we shall see. <clears throat> Excuse me. See if that's a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so we have our backer there, and from what I can tell, it won't be seen from the front. Okay, and then we could stamp our to and from on here, but I'll do that. Um, well, should I do that now? No, I'll do that last. All right, so we're going to take this part of it with the window, and we're going to add our um, acetate to it. And I am going to try and use this uh, really thin score tape that I have. Sorry my arm is in the way. Still have to zoom you guys in. Let me put something down here so you can see. Okay. What, baby? So I have two tapes here. They look like they're about the same width. I'm going to use the score tape because it's stronger. But this one you can get at Joann's in that like dollar spot for um, $1.99 and it's really good. I've had success with it. So I'm going to just use some score tape to go around all the areas that I want to put the acetate window and go from there. Now this is where having quarter inch tape would come in, come in handy and I do not have any. So I'm going to try to trim this in half and see if I can do that. Just going to try to cut some pieces down to be pretty thin around the window. We'll see how we do with that. Sorry. Tiger, it's not, no. It's not time to play Polly. Mommy's doing a video. My cat is obsessed with playing ball. She literally will go fetch a ball and bring it back to you. <laughs> so she's at my feet with her ball right now. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. Okay, so that fit pretty good. And that was taking the quarter inch tape and just kind of trying to cut it in half. But I only need the thin pieces around the windows on the side. So for the rest of it, we can, you know, use the regular size but I'm going to try to do the same thing where um, you know like if you're doing any shaker you want to kind of make sure that your tape are going to run up next to each other where they where they meet just so you don't have an area where anything could slip through or something like that you know so I'm going to bring that over here Tiger, stop. I'm doing a video. My goodness. Sorry. <laughs> She's over here at my feet, tearing up the carpet. Give me my ball. Tiger. Okay. So I've just put some random pieces there, and I'll cut down. I'm using the um, acetate sheets from Hero Arts. And I'm just going to do the same thing and cut these down, kind of eyeball it. You know, you really only need this part um, covered with the acetate, so let's go up a little bit. So I'll see. Let's see how that'll work. It might be too big. Oh, that'll work. Okay, so I've got that piece. And I will remove the backer on most of these. So just taking your time, you know, when you're doing this, so you know, uh-oh, did that pull up? Uh, pulled up the paper. Okay. Okay really cheap paper. Oh, here we go. There we go. Okay, just make sure that your tape actually stays on the paper. And um, just practice, you know, it's a lot of this is just practicing and having patience and, um, you know, the more you do it, 
the more you learn from your mistakes and honestly that's just how you learn anything but don't be discouraged with yourself you know and you know don't put yourself down that's I think what I regret is and I still do it but you know just try not to put yourself down don't you know don't say negativity thing negative things to yourself because you haven't figured out how to do this yet I know it's frustrating but um you know we want this to be a joyful experience you're making things to you know relax and craft so we don't want it to turn into a negative thing and putting yourself down so just be patient and believe in yourself because you're gonna get it I didn't think I would but you know I feel like I'm doing okay now you know, I never would have thought I'd figure these things out. <laughs> and I, I know how frustrating it can be because I used to be one of those. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. I can't. Why? They make it look so easy, you know? Okay, so now I got all kinds of scrabbly there. And I'm going to just try my best to line this acetate sheet. And you could use any kind of packaging, like leftover packaging from something that has like this kind of plastic window. You don't have to buy these fancy acetate sheets. To be honest with you, I don't know if I like any of them because they scratch very easily. And I don't like that look. You know, like there's something on it now. But <laughs> anyhow, so we got our little plastic window on there, okay? And then now what we want to do is we want to take some foam and we want to build up our little area. And like I said, there's um, companies out there now that make these really thin... Um, this is just came in a paper pumpkin kit. They make these thin um, foam tapes. Um, you could take, I'll show you here in a minute, and this one is a good size. They're actually meant for shakers. Um, so you could look online and look for, if you went to Stampin' Up, you could order from there. I'll leave Alicia's information down below in the description if you want to order uh, these specific type of foams that are like I said they're actually made for shakers but there's other companies out there also that um, you could probably go into Simon Says Stamp you know Simon Says Stamp, Ellen Hudson um, I don't know if I've seen these in the store but there certainly are plenty of um, companies that make the thinner tapes um, you know, for doing shakers. MFT has a lot. They have the new round ones I think they're coming out with too that is for round shakers. Um, but <clears throat> let me get these done here and then I'll show you what you can do with your the other one. Now this one I'm going to try to am I in camera? Okay. So I'm going to bring it right here and I'm going to try to get it to touch this one if I can without it showing on the S tape because I don't want sequins to be able to get through there. I don't know if I did a good job. Let's see. So I'll just, yeah, I'm going to lean it in that way. I don't think you'll be able to see it. But again, we remind ourselves this is a gift tag. It's going to get thrown off or thrown away. All right, that one. And then one little strip at the top there. And we want, again, to make sure that it is going to butt up against this side. And that it's going to butt up against the other side. Just, you know, making sure they're going to touch so the sequins can't get out. Okay, so we're going to do that there. And then um, down here, I'll just use some bigger foam. Now, because this is a gift tag, I'm not going to make this a double layer of foam, but you could do that. Because that would give you a little bit more. You know what? Let's do it. Let's do a double layer because then we'll have plenty of room and it'll show you what I'm talking about. Really quickly, if I can do this, I'm sorry. I'm just going to go and take the release paper off of what we just did. Okay. And 
whatever foam you have, you just cut it down. You can cut it down into small strips like this. Just to save time on the video, I am using the ones that are already cut down, but um, you can use your big tape like this. You can take a piece, the big, you know, if you have the 3M foam tape or you have foam tape that came in a roll from somewhere, you can fold this in on itself so you already have the double layer, right? So you're going to fold that over on itself. We just folded it on itself. And then you can remove the, the cut it down to the size you need. Sorry about my phone. This is already double in thickness now. But see, I can get like three really thin rolls this way. And then if I was using this brand on this shaker, I would already be set because it's doubled. Right? Okay. And then just to make it easy to work with, you take the release paper off the entire thing and then it's more moldable and shapeable if you were doing like a little circle or what have you. Okay, so let's see if this is going to be, just so I'm not wasting it. This is a double layer, so I'm going to just use this little piece here on the bottom just because I have it, the release paper off. I don't think it'll affect too much down here on the base. So we're not going to have any shakers there. But on the top here, I do want another row of um, the foam so we can make it a little bit higher. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to go around and just stick it right on top of the old one. Okay? And this time, I'm actually just going to follow it around so I can make sure that everything's going to touch. I'm going to butt it up against there. Up against this one. I'm going to feel, using my feelers, I'm going to lay it down on top of the other foam. Okay. Not too many. Whoa. Get off of me. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to butt it up against this one, making sure we're on top of the other foam as best we can because then, you know, there's not going to be anything really sticky that the sequins are going to stick to, but we're going to fix that even if there is. I'm going to come into the center and go on top of that foam and just cut away what we don't need. But we want to make sure they're going to touch, so I'm going to just kind of squish it in there and make sure it fit. Okay, so we're going to do that. And I'm trying to figure out what's happening here. Did I put that on the wrong side? I did. Alright, well, we're not going to take the release paper off of that one. <laughs> it went in sideways, so the release paper is actually on the top. Oh, well, see? It isn't always, no matter how many times you've done it, it's never a guarantee you're going to get it right. Okay, but this is the gist of making your actual window. Sorry about the noise. Okay, that's basically your concept of making the window there. Now I want to see which way is up on my backer paper. So this is going to be up and you can make it a little bit prettier on the back. Um, let me just, I'm going to trim this one more time because I will ultimately use this tag. I don't want it to be, you know, nonsense. And I don't know why. I need to get one of those crocodiles so I can have a prettier edge. Alright, we're just going to go with the flow. So, apologize. Okay, so I just want to see where the top is going to be. And I'm going to mark that so I know that is the top. So when I go to put my uh, paper back in, then I can see about where I need to put my little guy. Now, we could decorate in all kinds of ways, you know. 
I'm just going to quickly put some tape on him and add him to my backer. Okay. Let's see. Okay, and hopefully that will match up. So we're there we got him in there. And what we could do if we wanted is to go and add, I'm going to try this little snow marker and just add a little bit of material. I don't know if we'll see it, but I'm just going to kind of dot around with this. Okay, and then we're going to heat set that. In just a minute, let me let that dry. That was using the snow marker that I just picked up from Hobby Lobby. I'll be right back. Let me let that dry for a second. Okay, so I got a little impatient and was heat drying it. And as I heat dried it, it started puffing up. So you get like this little pom-pom effect. So we did that, and um, you saw all I did was literally just go around and dot, 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 and then I let it dry. I didn't let it dry. I let it heat dry, but or I used a heat gun on it. But if you let it air dry and then go and use your heat gun, you get a little bit better of a result, but, you know, it's not too bad. So this is what it's going to look like ultimately um, when we're finished. And we're going to add some little shaker sequins in there. And we'll add our tag and we'll be done. Okay, so um, if you it has a sentiment on here, so I'm not worried about that. But um, the to and from on the back, we could do that very quickly. Or you could hand write it, you know, whatever you would like to do. That's up to you. Uh, my husband just likes to usually go in and hand write, you know, to and from. But... I personally like the look of using, you know, uh, a to and from stamp. So I'm going to do that very quickly here. And I probably should have done it before I heat that um, snow stuff, but, you know, to each his own. Okay, so that's not too bad. It came out all right. So it says to and from on the back. And we will just get some little shaker material. I wanted to try this out. First and foremost, you want to use some anti-static. And we were talking about this. You go in on the inside of all of the foam tape. Okay, you can coat your actual acetate if you'd like. I'm going to put some down here because I accidentally put that piece in the middle on the wrong way so if that release paper comes off then those are going to stick all over that little guy so I'm just lightly going over my acetate and then I'm going to just really if I had my soft tissue rag down here I would use that but I don't so I'm just going to lightly take my soft sweater and run it over the accent acetate to get rid of that white residue of the powder um, but that's it I'm gonna just lightly do that okay but I wanted to try this stuff that came in the diamond dust it came in the um, my monthly heroes snow globe kit looks really messy but I thought we would see what it actually does it looks like glass I'm going to open it over this bag they sent. I can see why they did that and sent it in a bag. I'm going to add a little tiny bit in there. And it does feel, feel like little glass shards. I mean, obviously it's not sharp, but that's what it um, reminds me of. And it is super, super messy. Do it over your trash can. Do it over a coffee filter. I've got it on this bag that it came with, but yeah, that's really messy. Put that out of the way. Okay, and then where did my 
little sequins go. Mm, I just had them out here. Darn it. Hold on. If you have some... Oh, I just had them sitting here. Where'd it go? Hmm, that's what I get. Hold on, let me find my sequins. Alright guys, so I have no idea where my sequins went. Hmm. Alright, well, poo. So, put some sequins in. I would recommend using like size 4 millimeter, really smaller ones. And, um, you know, that would probably be better to use a smaller size since this is a small tag. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to throw a couple things right here because I didn't close the bottom of this. Just a little bit of support there. All right, and then we'll finish this off. Oh, I don't know what's happening with this. So the only thing about these thinner ones, <laughs> they kind of tend to shift on you. So keep an eye on that. Make sure that it's, um, you know, release side up. And I'll take that last one off. We're going to go around, take all of the release paper off, except for that middle one that I messed up. Sorry this video wasn't as smooth as I would have liked it to be. I thought I was prepared. Sorry, let me get these. I'm trying not to shake it because I have all that little tiny um, material inside. So I'm trying to be very careful, just going slow. And, you know, keeping this real time as much as possible so those of you that are new can see you know, how it's really being done. Alright, and then we're going to just look at our, put it this way. Remember we put a little dot on the back to show us kind of where the top is. And then we're just going to make sure that we're covering the adhesive. And I'm just trying to see on both sides. Bear with me here. I just want to make sure I'm going to cover all of the foam. And give that a good press. Making sure that it's, um, you know, sealed, so to speak. So we have our to and from on the back. You could put a little, you know, a little uh, sticker or you could cover that up where we made that little... I would normally use a pencil and erase that little dot, but I couldn't find my pencil. My son's been down here crafting. So, okay, we're going to check the sides, make sure it's all sealed. Yep, and then we have our little guy. And I'm just going to tap on my acetate to get some of that to come off, but there you go. You have a little shaker. It has the snow in there. And it's going to be a nice little size shaker gift tag. You can't really, let me see if I can get some of that. It's kind of going up into the, that bubbly snow. There you go. You can see a little bit of it shining. And again, if you had the sequins, I would add sequins, you know. So there is a little shaker tag using the Mom Elephant Reindeer Stamp and Die Set. Again, you can go over to my Instagram and enter to win the actual stamp set. But don't feel like you have to have that to make gift tags. Now, of course, my little, here we go, my little twine. <laughs> it's disappeared. Uh, this came with the um, gift tag set that you can win also over there. And, um... I'd say these are pretty decent. I got these at Michael's as well. Um, so yeah, making little shaker gift tags. And let's see here. I'm just going to slide that through. I kind of just folded it over on itself, making a loop. And then I'll get that to go through if I can. Pull it through the other side. And then... Open this side up, 
So you have the loop on one side. Oh, I lost a tail. You want both tails to go through. Let me get them in there. Okay, so you have both of the tails on one side. Have a loop on this side. And I'm just going to straighten that out so they're equal. Okay. And then I'm going to take my loop and grab those tails and pull through. Okay. And that's just going to give us a little string to attach to a gift. Okay, thanks so much for patience, guys. I just had a couple of people requesting um, making some gift tags, the kind that I had made earlier um, for my husband. Again, using the um, MFT Circle Scallop Spring Cuts and just, you know, cutting a larger scallop and a smaller, adhering your images to the um, front of your tags, and then you're going to stamp to and from on the back, so you could put those on your tags, um, add a little ribbon to hang it, or using the new Recollections um, gift tags and making a shaker. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Again, I appreciate your patience as I was doing this for a viewer request. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.